Hi, so we've seen all the basics in this series of RenderWorks videos, so let's get to some of the fun stuff now. When you've mastered textures, light and detail, you may want to get that extra bit of photorealism out of your renderings. Well, fortunately, RenderWorks has some advanced camera effects to offer, which we're going to look at today. You may remember this library design from one of my earlier videos. Let's see how RenderWorks camera can improve on everything we've set up so far. So I'm going to place a RenderWorks camera in my design layer, which is just point and click and another click on the Activate Camera button provided in the Object Info palette. It takes me to an OpenGL rendered perspective. OK, so let's create a viewport right here. And as you know, I like to use custom RenderWorks for my viewports to take control of all the settings. I'm still setting this to all low, except for blurriness, because I know I have some textures with a lot of blur in here and I'm switching on camera effects, that's new, and full screen preview. I'm choosing a RenderWorks background to give me something to look at out the window. Then click update. So here's my result. Remember it's all set to low, so no great quality yet, but otherwise it's a normal scene. So how do we get to the camera effects now? Well, it couldn't be easier. Right click your viewport, choose edit camera, and there you are. The camera has become part of the viewport and it's showing its parameters in the Object Info palette. The first effect I want to look at is Depth of Field. So I'm activating it and I'm setting the f-stop to f1 and the focus distance to 4000mm. Then click on Return to Viewport and just update the viewport. As always I'm presenting the finished result straight away, render time is about a minute. When rendering is finished I can see some blurring in the books near the camera and also around the window frame. Well, maybe that's not what we want, so let's say we want the window frame to be sharp and just the books in the foreground to become blurred. We can do that by editing the camera again and choosing Click to set focus distance from the Object Info palette. I'll just click on the window knob and the focus point's been set to 7400mm or thereabouts. After updating the scene, you can see that the window is now sharp and the books in the foreground are more blurred. We've successfully moved the focus. By the way, if you want less blur in foreground, just use a smaller aperture, which is the same as a larger f-stop value. Obviously, there's still a lot of graininess here, and that's because we have anti-aliasing still set to low. So let's change that and turn it up to very high. With depth of field, anti-aliasing plays a much more important role than with renderings that don't use camera effects, so prepare for some longer render times before deadlines if you want this. In this example, if you look carefully, you will notice that the RenderWorks background image that I'm using is not out of focus, although it should be. That's because it's not a physical object with a real distance to the scene. If you want blurred image backgrounds, your best option is to use an image prop. Notice how big the image prop is compared to the actual model. That's important because you want the distance between it and the scene to be large for the focus blur to work with smaller apertures. Let's just have a quick look in OpenGL to check that the image itself is actually relatively sharp and in focus. OK, so I'm going to switch to my rendered viewport. This is actually a rendering that's unfinished except for the window part. So let's take a closer look there. As you can see, the image prop is slightly out of focus and what we're getting is what photographers call a bouquet effect. If you look real close, you can actually begin to see the pentagon shape that the light spots have taken on. That's an iris shape simulation that the RenderWorks camera delivers as part of the camera effects. Since that's a very nice effect, let's have a closer look. I've prepared two crop portions of my viewport. The left one is with low anti-aliasing, just as a comparison. In the right viewport, you can see the pentagon iris shape. RenderWorks can actually be set to create different iris shapes. All you need to do is to edit the camera and choose a different iris shape. So again, right click, choose Edit Camera, and find the iris shape pop-up menu in the Object Info palette. Now if I choose a triangle, the bouquet effect is going to subtly change after updating the viewport. Triangular bouquet is particularly nice with wet reflections and in night scenes. OK, we've just time for one more and that's Bloom. You can enhance scenes with strong directional lights by adding Bloom to the RenderWorks camera. The Bloom effect is added as the last pass in a rendering, so you won't be able to see it until your rendering is actually finished. I'm going to add it to this scene by again accessing the camera and adding just 12%. Anything over 20 is likely to spoil the effect. I'm also adding some vignetting to darken the edges. Vignetting is also an after effect created when rendering is finished. 
After the viewport's been updated, you can see a subtle glow of stray photons on the lit surfaces and the vignetting around the edges. You could of course add the vignetting in Photoshop, but then you'd have to add it in Photoshop. So that's it for today. Happy rendering!